I'm Joshua Delisle and today we're making an interchangeable tool system for the power hammer. A super quick one that we can whip off and whip on new tools really, really fast. Now this system won't work for the super heavy power hammers, but anything under say 100 weight I think would be absolutely ideal. And in this case we're using a DIY power hammer. But let me show you exactly how this is going to work. Okay, so the first tool that I'm going to make is the tool holder. Quite simply, it's a piece of, um, of the 80mm box section, same stuff that I made the, the main posts for the power hammer out of. Then I've got some 10mm plate to act as the kind of flat bottom for holding different shapes of tools. And then this part, which is the 50mm box with a nice thick, I think that's a 6mm wall thickness. Double check that. 6mm wall thickness. And this is excellent because what I intend to do is to slide other pieces of steel diagonally across it that are 50mm long and the cross section between the two corners is exactly 50mm. So let me weld this together and I'll show you uh, how, how I'll use it. There you have it, the finished tool holder. So let me show you how it fits onto the power hammer. So the tool quite simply slots onto here. So what I want to do now is adapt some tooling to fit in there like so. And the idea is you should be able to quickly take it in and out as and when you need it. So the next tool I'm in the process of making is a set of progressive dies to create acorns, such as this one here. Now I've still got the original power hammer um, tool for, for forging these, but what I don't have is the first stage of the progression, and I want everything to fit the new power hammer. So basically, what I'm going to do with this part, if I show you, it's just two lumps of steel on the end of a spring. Uh, swage and all this is is 25 mil or, or one inch uh, by six mil quarter inch um, flat bar it's bent into a U shape like such there's some 50 millimeter round or two inch uh, lugs of steel on the end and then all I'm going to do is forge uh, this round bar into it like so and the idea is rough out that basic shape of the acorn before it goes into the final die this one where both halves are the acorn are finalized like so can you see can you see the negative space in there so that's what forges that final shape of the acorn that acorn is the master one that was uh, used to make these original dies. So I didn't think I need to show you how to make this because it's fairly simple. You've got a, a U-bend and then two lugs of steel on the end. But one thing I did want to point out is the way that I've welded it here. So I've, I've welded it normally, a simple butt weld, so all the way around. But then I've added these V's in like so. And what that does is it cr creates a, a cross lamina of the grain. So you've got the grain in the in the mild steel here going this way, you've got the grain in the, the lugs here going that way um, and that creates like a, a a bit of a fracture line where it's welded so creating these V's not only does it stiffen up the join area uh, but it also it, it creates this cross lamina of the grain structure and makes it a lot more um, a lot more solid, it's, it takes the punishment a lot better when it's being forged. So now that I've forged the main shape of the tool, what I want to do now is just use the grinder with a flat wheel and just give it some definition to so take off any sharp edges that would 
bite into the steel too much and just to refine the shape a bit more. So the acorn is actually more elliptical than it is round. So I just want to take off some of these shoulders and then um, it will be ready for the next stage and fitting it to the tool. So how the tool holder works is I've got a piece of this 50 flat here so you can see I've sheared off a couple of pieces here and what I do is I just dress the edges so you get these nice nice rounded smooth edges and what happens is these now fit nice and snugly inside that area there now like you can't twist it so easily and it and it's a very simple shape you just chop them and you just stick them on and you can turn the tools around either way. Um, so it, I, I've done this before on my old power hammer and it's just worked a treat and I've never needed to do anything else. So I'm gonna stick with it really. Um, but basically uh, that's gonna get welded now to the underside of the tool. So I can hold this in position like so roughly to where I want it to be on the power hammer, put two tacks uh, across there like so, we just hold it in the horizontal, so this will go on there, I can put two, two tacks here and here, pull the tool out so it will be attached like so and then I can zip a weld across the, the sides there and it will be nice and strong enough for, for what we need. So I'll do that now with both of these tools and then we'll start forging some acorns hopefully. So the next tool I'm making is something very similar to this. Now this is uh, commonly referred to as a blacksmith's helper. Now this one's gotten a bit damaged over time and doesn't really work anymore. But essentially, tools just like this, this is uh, tool steel, uh, they would slot into the grooves there and you could create all kinds of different tooling uh, for cutting things, for shaping things, for uh, notching, all, all of that. And the way that the dies kind of hold everything aligned, you can get quite uh, precision tooling on the go. The thing is with this one is that I could put it into the hardy hole of the anvil and use it by hand, which is what they're commonly used for. Uh, but in this case, I want to have some cutting and shearing tools for the power hammer. Um, so I'm going to create my own adapted version to work like so. So what I've simply got here is a piece of 100 millimeter square by 10 mil thick flat or if you like uh, four inch uh, by four inch then I've got um, some 20 mil square that will be positioned similarly like so and then on the ends here I've got some thir uh, 40 by 15 and essentially the tool slots in like so and it goes up and down um, but with a very precise fit and then I've very simply got um, a handle to put onto it with the interchangeable die cross section if you like so I weld this together and then I'll show you how it performs
So it's practically finished now, but I think what I've decided to do is just put some welds on the inside faces here. Um, I didn't want to because I wanted this uh, passageway to be as clear as possible, but my, my thinking is with the amount of forces going up and down, there could be some side to side forces as well that might pry this apart. And of course, because there's no weld across here, that could become a fracture point. So I'm just going to do four beads, one across there, one across there, and same on the other side. And uh, then it then it's done. And we'll try it on the power hammer. Okay, so back on goes the tool, the tool holder. The moment of truth, whether this all fits. Oh, come on. All right, I'll have to adjust that then. It'll essentially mean moving the slot over a little bit. Oh well. All right, so quite clearly, I make all the mistakes so you don't have to. But there we go, there it is. It fits in there nicely now. And there's also enough space in between that you can actually pick out the tools and put different tools in if needed. One thing I will say though, is if you are putting your hands underneath the hammer, you need some way of isolating the hammer, either putting a block underneath your pedal so the, the hammer head is guaranteed never to come down whilst you're using it. The best thing about having the, this kind of tooling arrangement is I can have my hands out the way, all away from any of the, the working part area and lift things out, rather than putting my hands inside the block area. Right, so these are coming out absolutely fantastic. If you want to take a closer look, see the smoothness and the definition? That is really lovely. I'm really pleased with those. And these are now going to be available on my Etsy shop. So it's worth noting though, uh, to wire brush it before putting it into the final die. Therefore you don't forge any of the scale back into itself, making it uh, the, the surface rough. But you can also spray a little bit of water into the die and what that does is as the die closes it creates some steam pressure and blows all the scale away which is um, a really good idea. It keeps everything nice and clean and also you can use the airline to just toot out any loose scale that's in the die as well. There also is other things available like graphite pastes 
and you can rub some of that onto the dyes prior to using and what that does is it keeps it lubricated and helps protect uh, the dye from wear. Um, and it's worth mentioning that none of the dyes that I've got here are made of anything special, it's just mild steel. Uh, this one though has been case hardened and we'll look into uh, um, dye making in the future, I've got another one that you'll quite like and that is, um, that is case hardened, I've got some case hardening compound and I can show you how to use that. And very lastly I'll just show you the power hammer. So you see how the tool holder is bolted on with a single bolt. Now what we can do is create other tooling like fullers for example, uh, top and bottom fuller. And I would do exactly the same, I would take some 80mm box like this. The railway track, the way it's been cut, fits inside this perfectly. And all you've got to do is uh, weld a nut on it, put the bolt on, and it will it'll sit on there really well. And as long as the nut stays within this 100mm section, you've got a little bit of play, but it's worth bearing in mind you stay within this 100mm section. Um, it, won't, it won't get knocked off as the hammer reci reciprocates back up. Um, and if we even drill like a little divot in the side there, it means it's got a locating part for the bolt to go into. Therefore, there's no way that that tool can then slip off. Uh, so we've got uh, a lot, lots more tooling for lots more different projects that you'll see, and you'll get a good un understanding of how I'm then using this hammer. Now, if you found that helpful, please let me know in the comments. I'd really appreciate that. And if there's anything else that I've missed or you'd like to see more of, do let me know. Now what we've got coming up next is I finally designed the next welded sculpture which is going to be a stag head sculpture this time, so that's something to look forward to and I've upgraded my cheap TIG to professional standards and that might also interest you as well. And in the meantime to help this channel and to get, get the algorithm to help it grow I really appreciate you liking and subscribing and encouraging this channel to grow. So happy forging a life worth living. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye.